In the last lesson, we took a look at a few different types of low-pass and high-pass filters that used capacitors or inductors. These two types of filters operated in a simple way, filtering out either higher frequencies or lower frequencies from an input signal. This time, we will take a look at what happens when we combine a low-pass and high-pass filter together. This new filter is actually called a band-pass filter, and we can easily make one with a resistor, capacitor, and inductor. Many different types of resistor, inductor, and capacitor, or RLC circuits, exist, and each one has a unique purpose in how it operates and affects input signals. However, for this lesson, we're going to focus on this specific RLC circuit. When we combine together a resistor, inductor, and capacitor into a circuit like this, the input signal will have both lower and higher frequency signals filtered out. This graph shows the output magnitude of a signal given different frequency input into the filter. You can see there is a single peak, which should be exactly at the frequency that you want to pass through the filter unchanged. Each RLC filter will have three main components that tell us what kind of filter it is. A center frequency, which passes through the filter unchanged, it is represented by omega zero. A lower cutoff frequency, represented by omega one, and an upper cutoff frequency represented by omega two. Just like in our previous lesson, any frequency outside of the cutoff frequency is minimalized and filtered out of any input signal. Let's take a moment and run through an example with these formulas. We'll use the resistor equals one ohm, capacitor equals 100 microfarad, and inductor equals 100 microhenry. That makes our center frequency 10,000 radians per second and our lower cutoff frequency 6,180 radians per second and upper cutoff frequency 16,180 radians per second. Radians per second is a bit of a bizarre way to measure frequency, so now we'll convert over to the Hertz unit by dividing all of the answers by 2 times pi. And now you can see our center frequency is 1591 hertz, lower cutoff frequency 984 hertz, and upper cutoff frequency 2575 hertz. The three arrows showing up on the graph show you how strong the output signal will be at those different frequencies. Now let's build up the RLC circuit that we saw in the theory section and experiment a little bit to see what happens when we change some of the values in the RLC circuit. For this experiment, we'll need a breadboard, jumper wire kit, and from the analog parts kit, the stereo cable with exposed wires, an audio jack breakout board, a 100 microhenry inductor, 100 microfarad capacitor, and a 10 nanofarad capacitor. First, we'll build up a base circuit without the filter. We'll use the audio breakout board and connect it to the stereo cable with exposed wires. Once our circuit is complete, we're going to use a laptop with the sound card oscilloscope and some speakers to hear the output sound. The sound card oscilloscope actually has a built-in signal generator, so we'll create a ramp signal that goes across the whole audio frequency range and test out how our filter reacts. Now let's add in the 100 microhenry inductor and the 100 microfarad capacitor to create the RLC filter.
and when we play the audio ramp, you can notice a difference in the way that it sounds compared to when we didn't have the RLC filter. Let's swap out the capacitor with the smaller 10 nanofarad capacitor and see how things sound. Again, the ramping audio signal sounded a little different. Continue the experiment and swap out different inductor and capacitor values and see the effect they have on the input sound. What you'll quickly notice is that the inductor and capacitor are controlling where the upper and lower cutoff frequencies are at. In the real world, Passive RLC filters can still be found in modern electronics, but they will rarely be through-hole parts like the ones we've been using. They will be created with surface mount parts or even built with active circuitry as we'll learn in the next lesson. A great filter is one that peaks right at the frequency that you want to let through your filter, but a perfect filter is one that peaks exactly at that frequency and at no other. All parts in this online course we're provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Now that we've learned about the different types of passive filters, it's time to move on to the more complicated but flexible active filters.